Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Um, I'm super excited and a little bit nervous for this live. <laughs> I'm going to be sharing uh, what I know about the human alien hybridization programs, as well as some very personal experiences, things that I've experienced over this past year. Uh, so yeah, how's everybody doing here live? I've got Zach, Victor, Lisa. Hello, everybody. I think I saw Lakeside Laura, too. Hello, guys. Yeah, so what I'm going to be doing tonight, this is a little bit different instead of Sarsi Chats. And if there's anybody new here to my channel, welcome. I'm Lily Nova. I share content on making contact with extraterrestrials, UFOs, star seeds, star seed awakening, all of that fun stuff. So the human alien hybridization program. And if I don't keep an eye on the chat or if I don't like answer right away, uh, don't feel bad. I'm probably going to do more questions and things at the end, but I want to kind of go through all of these different experiences that I've had. So I'm kind of basically just going to start from the beginning. Uh, and in the chat right now, let me know if you've had any experiences with the hybrid program. Don't be nervous. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Love you guys so much. Love, love, love you guys. Yeah, let me know if anybody's had any experiences or if you're watching the replay in the comments. I've done some sessions, so I do start origins readings too. And the hybrid program has come up a few times. Um, and I'll share some of those experiences as well. Uh, but I think a lot more of us are actually a part of this program than we realize. And I asked Star Family before this, you know, how many of us, how many star seeds are in the hybrid program? And I'm thinking around half of us are probably in some of these programs. And just a little bit of background on the programs, what I know about them. There are many, many, many different hybridization programs. There's many different extraterrestrial races. So it kind of depends on where you come from, you know, your, your star family, what you signed up for. So in all of these instances, we would have signed up to experience this. I think most, at least most of them, we would have experienced or would have signed up to do this beforehand. And some of the reasonings for the hybrid programs would be um, to help with certain races. And, and humans also have very, very great genetics, apparently. We have amazing DNA. We're a mixture of at least 22 extraterrestrial races mixed within us. We have a lot of potential um, and we're only functioning off of about 5% of our DNA. So there's just so much potential there. And so to help out some different races, uh, as well as some of these hybrids will actually eventually be coming to earth as the earth ascends into the 5D and we begin having open contact. Some of these beings will actually be coming down to earth to be living with us. And that's a good way to introduce these different species and kind of introduce humanity to the, the, you know, galactic community by saying like, look, this, this is part human. And, and some of these beings look like us, some of them don't, there's so many, like I've seen so many different types of hybrid, uh, children. So, and I'll show you guys some pictures near the end. Um, yeah, so I'll start going through some of my, thank you, Laura. I'll start, <laughs> I'll start going through some of my experiences. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to share some photos as well. And whenever I pull up the photos, really take a second to see if any of these pictures affects you. If it impacts you in any way, then that is a good indication that you actually do have hybrid children or you have some sort of a connection. So just pay attention to that. There are hybrids here already too. And a lot of us, good question. A lot of us, we, I mean, we basically were all hybrids. And what I've discovered is these programs often, they run in families and our star families, these different extraterrestrials, they will actually like kind of alter our genetics and upgrade us with each generation. So we're already hybrids, but then there's like other hybrid programs going on that are like even more and more hybrids. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we're already pro uh, hybrids for sure. Okay, so starting from the beginning, I didn't know anything about the hybrid program that was actually pretty like very out there for me personally, even <laughs> with all of the things I've experienced and seen. It was out there for me. <laughs> Hello, Tyler. Uh, so starting from the beginning, uh, about two years ago, I had just started doing readings. It was two Januarys ago, and I had a reading with somebody who, one of my first readings, actually, it was right after my article went viral with my UFO footage. It was on Lied, Lad Bible, The Mirror. It was all over the internet, and I, I got some people signed up for readings, and I'm actually really good friends with this person today, but I went into meditation, and then I saw an extraterrestrial, their star family. I'm actually going to share my screen to show you guys because I drew pictures of what they looked like. So I saw a being that looked like this. This is a gray being. And just a, a heads up, the... The hybrid children that I've seen of mine, I do believe I have some gray hybrid children, but I have other uh, Pleiadian and light blue beings, but I'll get into that in a little bit. But this person specifically, their family is gray, uh, Zeta Reticuli specifically, and there are positive and like negative grays. So it's not just, you know, one, one thing. These are definitely, these are definitely benevolent beings. I've actually seen this being multiple times. She's come to contact me. Let me make sure you guys can see it. Okay, you guys can see it. So this is what she looked like. She was wearing a dress, which I thought was interesting. A gray wearing a dress. Completely telepathic, didn't move their lips. And the next thing that they showed me was I saw these giant eyes. So my eyes are closed and I see these, these, these big beautiful eyes. And then I see them open. These big almond eyes. And it was actually a hybrid child. This was my first encounter with the hybrid program. It wasn't for me personally. It was for somebody that I was doing a reading on. And I was super nervous to tell this person that they were part of the hybrid program. But they were actually pretty cool about it. Uh, it they kind of, they were like, oh, okay. So I was like debating. I was like, should I even tell them this? But they were completely cool with it. And I've actually, uh, like I said, I've seen this being before. She's contacted me uh, multiple times. I have a connection with this person. We're still good friends today. So this is a, a gray hybrid. And he's the person who I did this reading for has actually had marks on his body before. I've never had any physical marks that I remember. Uh, mine has been very different. Uh, but like I said, there's different types of hybrid programs. And this little girl, so it was a little hybrid girl, part gray, part human, with big eyes. Uh, and she felt like love. I totally just felt flushed with love. I got emotional. And her name was Anita. And whenever I told this man that during our session, he was like in disbelief because his grandmother's name was Anita. So that's how he knew that I was like telling the truth. So, um, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. So that was my first encounter with the hybrid program. Fast forward a bit. This is in the last year, maybe six months, maybe longer. I was outside and I was kind of having a moment tuning in, connecting with the universe. And I felt star family there and I looked up in the sky and I saw suddenly saw these silhouettes of all of these different beings. And I heard telepathically in my head, these are your hybrid brothers and sisters. And I was like, what? Excuse me? So these were my mom's hybrid children. So I discovered it was my mom who had hybrid children first. And I actually kept pulling that Oracle card and I was kind of trying to avoid it because it was just a little much for me. Um, but I came to terms with, I have hybrid brothers and sisters up there. Uh, it looked like there was a variety of different types of races. Um, 
through my mom. Like I said, a lot of this runs in families. So this is also around the time I discovered that my mother and my father uh, have had abduction experiences and have strong connections with the extraterrestrials. So fast forwarding a little bit again, uh, my mom does have a memory. She saw a UFO once. That's the only reason why, not the only reason, but she was, she's the only one that believed me whenever I started seeing these craft. And she told me about, she lived in New Mexico. She was an army brat. She would travel to all these different states living on army bases, which is also a huge red flag. I didn't realize until later. Uh, but while she was, she was near Roswell, New Mexico, they were living there on a base and she would always go out stargazing by herself. I guess she was around like 16 and she would go out in the desert stargazing by herself. And she was out in the desert on her car stargazing. And she said she saw a ship, a light come out and then go. And then it swooped back around and came back and it freaked her out so much. She just got in her car and left. And shortly after that, she had a dream where she was on a ship and it was dark and then she woke up. And whenever she told me that, I was like, mom, that's not a, <laughs> that was not a dream. That was a memory. <laughs> so she's had a couple other weird things happen. Um, she was actually up on the ship two nights ago. The ETs woke me up in the middle of the night and told me that. So she has a tiny bit of memory, but not much. Okay, fast forwarding again. So then this is whenever I find out that I am in the hybrid program. Okay, where do we even start? <laughs> so the first thing that comes to mind is I, would, I was taking a bath one day, and whenever I do that, I like to make contact with these, uh, with my star family and these different beings because it's just, I don't know, you're relaxed and there's something about like the shower and the water. It's, I just find it much easier to communicate and connect. And some of how I see these beings is through visions, telepathic visions. So they'll send me telepathic messages. I receive in visual format. Um, or something that I've been developing this past year is if I relax my eyes and I, I can actually see into their dimension. So it's like a window opens up in front of me and I can see them. So I saw um, a Pleiadian a gentleman and a female through kind of like this window that opened up, if you can imagine that. And they brought a baby up. Well, they told me that I was in the hybrid program. And I asked if I could see the child. And they actually, they accommodated me and they brought this little baby up. So it was a part Pleiadian, part human hybrid baby. So that was a pretty cool experience. Um, around that same time, I started having procedures. They, they allowed me to stay awake during uh, three different procedures, which is pretty wild. <laughs> I'm amazed how you handle all this. It is definitely a full-time job. <laughs> definitely a full-time job. So this happened for like a period of time and I was writing all of this down in a journal. They allowed me to be awake during three procedures. And I know that, like I said, there are different types of hybridization programs. Sometimes people go up on the ship. This happened right in my bedroom. Um, and there was no sexual stuff involved at all. I've heard some people say that they also have had like sexual relationships with extraterrestrials. That's not how mine was. Uh, mine was very uh, like respectful. Um, but I was laying in bed and I was, you know, contacted. I, I felt their presence. And with this, this part just blows my mind. But with my clothes on, I'm completely clothed, laying in bed with my clothes on, they conduct a procedure on me and I could actually feel it was, it was basically through artificial semination. I could feel that happening with my clothes on again. And then for six weeks, I carried this, this basically this hybrid baby. And then after six weeks, they would 
take the baby and then it would continue growing up on the ship in kind of like a like an incubator type situation. Um, so that happened three times. And I documented this whole, all of these experiences. I was going to read straight from my journal, but whenever I was looking at it before this, I realized how just messy it was because I'm literally lying down in bed during this procedure, documenting everything that I'm feeling and everything that they're telling me. So I need to organize it better. Uh, but I will read part, part of one. So this is like kind of personal, but I just figured, you know, I mean, this is part of how it's done. Uh, I think it can be done uh, different ways, but this is how it was done with me. And again, this was with the Pleiadians. And then also with, um, let me share a picture actually, with some of my other star family who they have light blue skin. So this, just keep this in mind. This is what one of them looks like. And they are from the Andromeda constellation, originally Lyra, and then they migrated to the Andromeda constellation. This is uh, looks like the being Talia that I talk about on my channel, my star family, who has taught me basically everything. And then if you don't know what the Pleiadians look like, this is what the Pleiadians look like. So the first baby that I mentioned, which the Pleiadians look very human, was with this race. And then the other ones with, uh, oh, goodness. So with the blue beings, this is basically what the hybrid, my hybrid children look like, two of them that I know of. Look very human, just with light blue skin. So I just want to give you that as a, um, as a visual. Okay, so like I said, this happened three times where they allowed me to be awake during these procedures, uh, the artificial insemination, and then uh, they allowed me to be awake during the removal of one of them. And this, is, this blew my freaking mind. Okay, so I'm going to read through uh, my journal. I was documenting this during, while this was happening. Suddenly, I begin feeling sensations in my lower abdomen and we'll say uterus area. It almost felt like some, some technology was pulling and pushing at the same time. And again, this is fully clothed. So pulling and pushing at the same time without moving me. I got the feeling I shouldn't move and this was a procedure. It felt so weird. I can't even explain. It didn't make sense. I was not moving at all, but it felt like they were pulling him. This was the removal of one of the children. Uh, pulling him out of me without me moving at all. And I felt a, and this was at 10, 13 p.m., I felt a warm sensation and almost a throbbing feeling. Maybe this is similar to the tech they use to go through walls. I'm not sure. So they literally pulled this baby like out of me, through like the side of me. I It got intense for a moment. I asked what they were doing. And I got that they were taking him out. This lasted for a few moments. And then it stopped. I feel different afterwards. I asked how they did that. They replied, quantum, it's quantum. <laughs> That's the answer they like to give me whenever I have a hard time like explaining. Sounds like how a, a cesarean feels. Yeah, I don't have any human children, so I don't know. This is completely new to me. I'm not like, I don't know babies. I don't know kids. <laughs> and then all of this just started happening. Uh, so that's what they like to say whenever I'm like, how did you do that? Because the technology is so advanced and every point is connected. Everything is connected. It's quantum. So that's what they say. It's quantum. Um, I asked how long the baby was in there. They said six weeks. So I found I was carrying this for six weeks. 
Afterwards, I can still feel subtle warmth and a throbbing-like feeling. I feel like I should rest, not move too much, and I almost feel cramping and definitely a throbbing. It's like whenever you hit your finger with a hammer and all of the blood goes there and it throbs. That's what it felt like. And it swells and it's hot. And I occasionally felt stinging, a sub subtle stinging throb. And then this is the part that really blew my mind. This is whenever I find out that this was, uh, that was my dad. So my dad passed away about nine years ago. And this hybrid child that they just removed from me was my dad reincarnated. which is crazy. So I feel throbbing heat and some muscle twitching. Um, uh, this has been happening. I guess the muscle twitching has been happening a lot the last few days. Now, about an hour after it ended, 11.25 p.m., I'm feeling so much shifting and movement in my stomach, in my lower abdomen, like everything is readjusting. It's very strange. I can hear it too. Like I was hearing my stomach making noises. Uh, that might be it on that. Uh, let me see. I felt a sudden burst of growing energy coming from my chest. Heat uh, got very intense for a moment. Um, and then they gave me some personal messages after that. And that was that. So, <laughs> so yeah. So the last hybrid child that I, that I had that I was awake during that procedure was actually, it was my father reincarnated as a hybrid child. That just blew my mind so much. I'm going to check the chat and take a break for a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it either. And something else pretty crazy. So I asked the child's name. So my my dad uh, reincarnated. They said Jacob, like as in Jacob's Ladder. I'd never heard of Jacob's Ladder before. Well, I heard of it, but I didn't know what it was. So I'm going to look that up real quick. I don't know if anybody knows. Um. Jacob's ladder is a ladder leading to heaven that was featured in a dream the biblical patriarch Jacob had during his flight from his brother. So basically, he was named after Jacob's ladder being a bridge between the stars and humanity which I just think is very poetic. So I think he will be coming to earth eventually at some point and helping with the ascension and helping with the uh, assimilation of, of humanity and with the galactic community, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. This is just one day in my life. <laughs> so usually on my Sunday Live activations, I really like to share uh, a lot about what I'm going through on my Sunday live activations and on my channel um, for quite a few months, a lot this past year, I've been going through a lot of experiences like this that I have not been telling anybody because it's just so mind boggling and I'm like trying to process it also. Um, so yeah, so it feels kind of nice to be able to, to uh, share a little bit about what I've been going through. Um, this was a while ago. It's been a little while. I've been dealing with 5D pregnancy for the past like over six months. Uh, so this was, this happened probably like seven, eight months ago. Um, okay. Yeah. March is when this was happening. So there was three of them in a row. Okay. So then I'll read just a few other things. Um, on, on March 17th, I wake up visions of a baby being born dad my hybrid baby they took the other day at six weeks um 
And then I think there was something else that I wanted to share. Oh, okay. I wanted to add, I also got to see the donors, uh, three of the donors. I call them donors um, who donated the sperm that created these babies. Uh, the first one was Pleiadian male. The second one was a uh, light blue being. They were a hybrid themselves. Uh, so Andromeda and Lyran mixed with human already. So they were already a hybrid. He had light blue skin and he had long brown hair. And then the other one was a male with light blue skin and no hair. So I got to meet three of the donors, which was pretty cool. Three of the baby daddies. Uh, and then I guess, um, I'll go through some other notes that I have. So most children, this is messages from the star beings. Most children all from this point forward have more extraterrestrial genetics, like all children being born on earth. Um, there are such thing as negative hybrid programs. Now they're being cleaned up. Uh, and these children are being saved. I've also been visited by uh, a hybrid child in in my home. I felt her presence in my home, and it was crazy. I was doing dishes, and I heard, Mom, you know, I don't have any kids. And so, <laughs> suddenly I just felt like a, a, like a huge wave of emotion, and it was this hybrid girl. Um, and I found out that I had been part of a rescue mission and, and helped rescue this hybrid child from a negative hybrid program having to do with Orion. So she's actually, she's visited me a few times. Uh, she's a little bit older. And whenever I share photos, uh, there's a picture of one that kind of looks like her. Uh, she has, I haven't like seen her, but I've sensed her. She has larger eyes, but, and she has long, dark hair. And she feels like older, like maybe early teens. And her name is Starlight. So that is one who has been rescued from one of these negative programs. Hopefully this is all making sense. Uh, so the negative hybrid programs are now being cleaned up and these hybrid children are being saved. Uh, I teach Orion hybrid children that have been saved. So I've been involved in those rescue missions and helping teach the children. Uh, I got the message recently. They have now found a nice home for them. And there are many positive hybrid programs involving Pleiadians, Orion, Lyrans, Arcturians involved. I believe the Arcturians help with caretaking, managing, and teaching and healing these children. Many of us have hybrid children. We've volunteered for this. They're loving beings. They will also help us, help bring us together. Some will return to Earth when the time is right. Some are living in a large city like ships. Some will be colonizing new planets. We are genetic royalty. Many of us have hybrid children and these programs will be surfacing more soon. So I believe there's gonna be a lot, uh, lot more coming up on these programs. So those, what I explained, those three experiences where I was awake from the procedure, I tuned in, uh, I asked to make contact with them last night to get any updates and see if I had any other hybrid children, and I do. Um, so I, there's also been experiences that I don't remember, and I have other hybrid children that I, you know, don't, don't know that happened. Um, so I'll go ahead and read from some of the information that I have that I got from them last night. How many do I have? This is me talking to them. Many. More than usual. Depends on the program and person. What races are they mixed with? Pleiadian and other races from the Alliance. Those who want to participate. And then this was an ET that's helping to take care of the children. Uh, then she showed me a very long list of different extraterrestrials involved in these hybrid programs. Like a really long list. So it's anybody who wants to participate, uh, and then we give, you know, consent before this reincarnation. We forget about it, of course. Uh, but now it's about time to start remembering this. Uh, where will these children be going? Some will stay on the ship. Many eventually will be introduced to Earth. Some will go to other planets with their families. 
and then I got to see a few of my other hybrid children. I saw a boy who was looked about like seven, eight, nine years old, um, and he had kind of like blonde hair, and they told me his name is Daniel, and which is crazy because that's my my brother's name, my dad's name, and my grandfather's name. So I thought that was kind of cool. It seems like they named these your hybrid children after, you know, things that mean a lot to you. I saw a four-year-old girl, Daisy. Her name's Daisy, and she had long hair. Uh, then I saw a two-, three-year-old playing with a toy car, a boy, or something. He was on the floor on his hands and knees, two or three years old, playing with a toy car. His name was Ryan. And whenever I was a kid, I really, really liked the name Ryan. I would make up stories. So that's just pretty wild. And I have another one named Rose. So it's funny you just said Rose. And then I got to see the female caregiver who was taking care of them. And I'll show you guys a picture. Um, they showed me a male teacher who was helping to teach these children. They assured me that these children are being very well taken care of. Uh, and then I saw a Caucasian female with no hair and an elongated skull. And yeah, that was a that was about it. Those are most of my most memorable experiences. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to to put them in the chat, and then I'm going to show you guys some images of what these children look like. I really, really, really want to create a series where I create art and kind of like go through as like a voiceover so that you guys can really, really see these experiences um, and see these children while I'm explaining this, maybe read from the journal, but and narrate, but also have like the, the images and all that. We need like movies and series and cartoons about this stuff. So. As far as I know, they are future selves from other dimensions. Yeah, so one of the, the Pleiadian uh, male that I saw, the first hybrid baby that I saw, uh, that Pleiadian male was actually in the Pleiadian female. That Pleiadian female was me from, an, from a higher dimension, maybe from another timeline also. So they, it was like me as a Pleiadian and my boyfriend, Pleiadian boyfriend or partner, raising a hybrid child from human version of me, which is pretty mind-boggling. The light blue ones are also some of my other star family. I wonder if the children miss their mom and want to be with you. You know, I wonder that too. Um, I think they're like pretty well taken care of, but I think sometimes we go up there and visit them and we don't remember. I think, I feel like we do spend time with them uh, at night and we just don't remember it. And you can contact these children. I think it would also depend on like if you're ready for that and if the stars are aligned with that for you, but you can actually set the intention and ask to make contact with them and then meditate on it and see what happens. So you can actually communicate like I said, uh, the female Starlight, she's contacted me quite a few times. I'm buzzing right now. Goosebumps everywhere. Yeah, pretty crazy. <laughs> this is going to mess up your human level. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Whenever this stuff started happening, I was actually with somebody and like I, I broke up with them. We went through a breakup and I'm like, this is just crazy. I can't even tell them like this stuff. So the next partner, they're probably going to have to be open to this. <laughs> it's hard to keep, you know, that big of a secret. So how long do they stay as a child? I'm not sure. I think it may, might kind of depend on the species. I think some of these uh, beings are, are from the future too. Um, but being mixed with human, I'd assume that their, their aging is at least very similar to ours. Yeah. I believe they're well taken care of and visits happen. I think so too. 
Alfredo, are you still doing past life star family readings? I am. I don't do them as often anymore, but if you would like to set one up, you can send me an email. There is my email address. There's a contact form on my website, which is lilynovaspaceart.com. Yeah, wow, just wow. I know, right? Tell them to watch this video before the first date. <laughs> They're going to freak out. Uh, they're going to freak out. Okay, so I'll go ahead and share some photos of what these beings look like. And just like I said, keep in mind, see how you feel whenever you see these photos. No aging if we are in, if you are in a higher dimension, we suffer this in 3D. Yeah, I could see that too. Definitely the aging isn't as hard and they don't have as much poisons attacking them all the time. So I'm sure they're much healthier. Um, I'm not a member of a group of star child mothers that share and learn from each other, but that sounds nice. This is just my own experiences that I've had this past year. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and share to show you guys some pictures. So just see how you feel whenever you see these photos, because probably about half of you, if not more, have hybrid children yourself. Okay. All righty. So let's see where to begin. Okay. So this is, um, this is what two of mine look like similar to that. They might have hair since they're mixed with human. Looking at images of them is a really good way to connect too. This is what one of the donors looked like, one of the dads. Uh, this is what a, a higher version of me looks like, Talia. So just a little bit of context. Uh, this is what one of the boys that I got to see uh, last night. The one named Daniel after my dad looks similar to this. I think these are adorable. So adorable. I really feel like I know one that looks like that. The boy. So like I said, many different races involved in these programs. So the possibilities of what these children can look like is really endless. So the younger, well not younger, she feels like she's in her teens or preteens, Starlight, the one who comes to visit me, who is, uh, was rescued from Orion from the from negative programs in Orion, she feels like she looks kind of similar to that. And I don't know if any of you guys have heard of the Ya Yell beings but they mentioned that last night whenever i was asking them more about the program and everything the yayel so i believe that's what they call kind of like this hybrid civilization or at least one of them one of the ones that i'm connected to yayel seems like it's a, a whole civilization it 
Here's another one. This boy has a feline ET genetics. So even the, the feline beings, the lyrans, those uh, specific lyrans can be involved too. You can see it in his eyes. It's a cutie. I also feel like Starlight looks kind of similar to that. So this is from that Yayo civilization. Pleiadians. And then Anita. Oh, and one of the, uh, the caregivers that I saw last night also said that she was Andromedan from the Andromeda constellation. She looked similar to this, and she was helping take care of my hybrid children. And that's, yeah, she looks similar to that. And there's my star family. One of them. Okay, did did any of those photos make you feel a certain way? I'm curious. Yeah, I'm going to be putting all of this in a book eventually. All of these journal entries are documenting so much. Need to organize it. Those are amazing pics. I can't wait to meet our galactic family. I felt I met someone similar to a gray when I was 14. That's awesome. Lisa. Hello, Lisa. Uh, one of the, there was a family I did a reading for. I did a reading on the whole family. Some of them were, they were kids, like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. And one of the boys was is super psychic and he actually saw his hybrid brother in the like he was outside in the driveway and he saw his hybrid brother for a second so he's been contacted this little boy has been contacted by his hybrid brothers and sisters so that you may have some sort of an experience like that uh, and like I said you can set your intention to make contact with them connect with them and I asked uh, I asked so I'm 31 and I 
all of this has just come to my awareness in the past year. I just in like I've made three hybrid babies <laughs> in the last year that I'm aware of that they allowed me to be awake during the procedure and uh, allowed me to document the process. Uh, and then seeing the other ones that I have, I believe I've been in this program since probably my late teenage years is what I'm getting. So I don't know how many exactly I have, but um, yeah. Borderline getting emotional a bit right now. Yeah. Like I said, a lot, a lot more of us than we think are, are involved in these programs. Makes so much sense why I love blue. The caregiver, yeah. Amazing. All of them. Yeah. Yeah, you guys. These children also, they feel like straight love. Like you will get emotional if you ever make contact with one. Sometimes I'll hear in my head, like mom, and then I'll just feel, feel that. Like they're just kind of saying like, hi, um, starlights come to me and giving me advice <laughs> before, uh, but they feel like love. They're such high frequency, beautiful, beautiful children. It's amazing. Um, Zach, my nephew looks like a Pleiadian hybrid. I'm convinced he is one. I do believe there are, there's hybrids walking around, uh, and some people are more hybrid than others. And some of them, they look so similar to humans that they can just walk around and blend in. The book of alien races, which is interesting. Yeah. Can I take real pictures of them? I don't know if they would allow me to, uh, do that. I would love to, though. Maybe whenever the, maybe whenever humanity is more ready, because I'm sure that would go viral. <laughs> Feeling a really high vibration right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, you can actually have have experiences, very profound experiences from, from connecting with these children. It's very, very healing. Hello, Katie. Yeah, let it all out. So if you guys feel inclined, uh, you can also definitely meditate on this and see if, uh, if you can meet any of them. I think I'm a hybrid grandma. Interesting. Okay, guys. Well, that was about it. Um, those were my hybrid program experiences. Hopefully that was helpful and got you thinking about, um, you know, just discovering more about your part in all of this. I really feel like more, like I said, and what the ETs told me, a lot of us are involved in this and there's going to be a lot more disclosure, disclosure going forward coming up on this program, I believe. So Stan Romanek story, he got pictures of his hybrid children. I think I know who you're talking about, but didn't the picture erase? Like he saw this child, he got a picture of it, but didn't something happen to the pictures? Or did he actually get to keep the photo? If it's the same guy I'm thinking of, he actually got a phone call from one of his hybrid daughters which is insane. Yeah, Stan Romanek, if it's the same guy. He has a documentary, so you guys might find that interesting too. He got two of them. One was erased. Okay, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Hi, Anne. How's it going? I hope that everybody had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, this Sunday, we will be doing a New Year's activation. Uh, the, this week, Star Family has... I've just had some pretty intense, uh, wonderful experiences this week. I've been going to bed early, relaxing and connecting, uh, doing a lot of just deep inner work and reflection. Uh, excited for 2024. I've got really good feelings about it. Yeah, check from the beginning, Lisa. 
Great show. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys. It feels good to finally, you know, share it. I've been holding all of that in. <laughs> it's, there's not many people that you can talk to about that. But yeah, hopefully that was helpful, you guys. Uh, and turn on the notification bell if you would like to be notified whenever I go live or whenever my videos pop up. Some people miss them and have said that they're not getting notified or they miss them. So there should be a little bell icon that you can click and just turn on notifications so that that doesn't happen. I usually post Wednesday nights with interviews and Sunday nights for the lives. And for the new year, I want to also start creating different types of content. I would really like to do artistic depictions to kind of take you guys through these different experiences. Um, yeah, so I'm super excited. Love you guys. All right. And if you're here right now, don't forget to like this video and please leave a comment and share if there's anybody who this can help. And I hope to see you guys Sunday. Bye.